In this video, we're going to focus on the concepts of hybridization, which involves two processes, hybrid orbitals and uh, electron promotion, uh, or two new terms, hybrid orbitals and electron promotion. So uh, in the previous video, we saw that not all bonding can be explained properly with valence bond theory alone. For example, we saw that carbon uh, has uh, two single electrons. And that doesn't explain why it can form four bonds. And we also saw that um, the shape of many molecules or bond angles don't quite uh, match up to what we would uh, find experimentally when we use valence bond theory alone. Um, the overlap and the way they come together just doesn't match up with the proper angle, like especially the case for water. Um, so uh, what we do is we incorporate new terms in there and new processes called electron promotion and hybridization. Um, and so what that essentially means is that uh, the orbitals within an atom will actually mix together to create hybrid orbitals these combo orbitals. So here, for example, we have um, an S um, joins the two P uh, orbitals in the same atom to form sp3, which means it's made up of one S and three P orbitals. And with each of these are sp3, 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 sp3. And now they have a new shape. And that new shape can better predict bond angles and shape of molecules overall. And it can also better predict uh, the amount of bonds that an atom can form. So what we've done is we've said in certain atoms, um, their orbitals can combine to form these new combo orbitals or what we call hybrid orbitals um, to better explain the shape of many molecules that we create. Uh, and so the idea is that when you combine the uh, different orbitals with each other, they're going to be named after what they're made up of. So for example, this is made up of an S and three P orbitals. So this is SP3, 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 SP3. So you basically have um, this whole new thing here is made up of these four SP3 orbitals here, 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 and here. And inside there's a little sphere. There's some spheres in there that you can't really see, but it, it kind of looks like P and also a little bit like S, but mostly like P because you can see it's three parts P and one part S. Um, and so in order for this to work, to make hybrid orbitals, you basically have to have the S kind of jump up in energy a little bit. Um, and so that's called an electron promotion. So uh, electron promotion happens in the process of hybridization or leads to that. Um, an electron jumps up to a higher energy orbital um, and then it can end up mixing in the process of hybridization. Um, so first you promote the electron to a higher level, and then the, uh, the orbitals mix together. That's called hybridization, and you get your new orbitals that are made, which have different shapes than the ones that existed alone before. There's actually different combinations you can get of hybrid orbitals. You can get sp, so made from 1s1p, sp2 made from 1s2ps, sp3 made from 1s3ps, like you see here, sp3d made from 1s3ps1d, sp3d2 made from 1s, 3ps, and 2ds. And we're going to take a look at how these are made and how you would represent the process that occurs. Um, but do know that it's basically just valence bond theory with these new terms incorporated to better explain bond angles and shapes um, that we observe in the lab. So let's go to our, our handout here. Again, we are looking at um, valence bond theory now. Um, and now we're just incorporating the idea of hybridization because sometimes the uh, valence bond theory alone is not good enough to explain um, what, we, what we need. So here we have just an S orbital, an S orbital. And here, let's do that one more time. An S orbital. And here we have a P orbital. And so um, this, these are part of the same atom. And uh, during hybridization, Basically, what's going to happen is um, the two are going to combine, mix together, and make sp. So essentially, you had this box, and then one of the p's, one of the boxes from the p's, they'll combine together. And now what you have is two boxes, but they're not they're not s and they're not p. They're now called sp, sp. They're each an sp now. Um, and so they, you notice they have a little bit of a different shape. They have sort of like a little, they still look like the P, but a little bit smaller on this end over here. So they're a mix of the um, P orbital and the S orbital that they, that they're, they consist of. Um, over here, you can see we have an S orbital mixing with 
three p orbitals. And that results in four orbitals overall, because you made it from four orbitals, one, two, three, four. But now they're called sp3. This is sp3, 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 sp3. So these are a combination of 1s and 3p orbitals. This is a combination of 1s and 1p orbital over here. Uh, the end result is that the number of orbitals should be the same as the number of orbitals you're using to build the hybrids with. So this is one box, one box. That's two boxes. So there should be two boxes here. This is an sp box, and this is an sp box over here. This is an s box. This is an, a p box, a p box, a p box. So we should have four boxes, sp3, 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 sp3. And they are now the new shaped orbitals called hybrid orbitals. So let's take a look at how this works and how it relates to bonding. Um, so let's use the example of CH4. If you remember, we said that carbon, we had a hard time explaining its, um, its bonding because it needs to form four bonds. Yet when you draw the energy level diagram like this, you'll notice there's only two single electrons available for bonding and the rest should be lone pairs in the, in the valence shell. Um, and so how do we get four connections, four single um, bonds, what we have to do is, or four single electrons to make bonds, what we have to do is we have to um, do a process called hybridization. And that process actually involves a couple things. Um, the first thing is it's going to involve electron promotion electron promotion. So what we're going to do is, this will be the electron promotion part, so we'll call this electron promotion. Electron promotion. We're going to take an electron from the 2s over here, so we focus on the valence shell, and move it up to the 2p. And that's going to result in this. So that's called the electron promotion process. Now when you do that, these all these that were involved in the electron promotion process, they're gonna to mix together. And they're going to um, now all be part of sort of the same sublevel in a way. Uh, and each of these will now be called an sp3, 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 sp3. And that's because the um, these are made up of 1s and then 3ps. So these three Ps over here. So they're each sp3 at this point. But now this explains why carbon can form four bonds because this high process of electron promotion and hybridization occur to form these, um, these hybrid orbitals with one electron in them each. And remember, they can take two electrons max when you have an orbital. So now they can combine and overlap with other atoms that have some single electrons um, in, their, in their orbitals. So this involved the process of electron promotion, which was increasing the electron up an energy level, and then hybridization, which was now mixing these two energy levels here, the 2s and the 2p. Now, the thing I want you to also notice is that uh, it's, it's hard to see in this diagram, but when you usually uh, do the hybridization, the sp3 is not the same energy level as the p. It's not the same energy level as the s. It's actually in between. So energy in between s and p because it, it's not quite a p it's not quite an s but it's somewhere in between it um, so energy in between s and p and so this allows for uh, the four bonds that we know carbon is able to form um, and again notice that the, it, they do have different shapes overall from the shapes of the orbitals from which they were made so here we can see the s and the three p's coming together they're going to form um, the four orbitals. Uh, if you draw them individually, they look like this. But when you put them together, they look like this here. And they basically contain their uh, single electrons to allow for overlap. So we might have, for example, a hydrogen over here overlapping with that, a hydrogen over here overlapping, a hydrogen over here overlapping, and a hydrogen over here overlapping with opposite spin, of course, um, if we're forming the CH4. But again, this was a process that happens within the same atom to explain the CH4 molecule that we couldn't quite explain before when we only had the two electrons that were available. This would be the unhybridized carbon, and we couldn't explain the bonding very well with just an unhybridized carbon. Um, 
So, and then this shape also gives you better angles overall and gives you more maximum, uh, better overlap to explain the predicted angles or the experimental angles that we'd find in the lab. So, as you mentioned, there's several different types of hybrid orbitals that you can get. You can get uh, your uh, 1s and 1p to make uh, your 2sp. You can get 1s and 2p's to make your 2sp2's. 1s and 3p's to make your 4sp3's. Then you can have your 1s, 1d, and 3p's to make sp3d. And then you can have sp3d2. Um, and uh, essentially, um, this also helps to explain the bond angles. So typically, when you see sp hybridization, you'll see 180 degrees. If uh, when you have 120 degrees, you'll know that that's sp2 hybridization. When you have 109.5 degrees, it's about sp3 hybridization. When you have your 90 and 120, that's going to be correspond to sp3 d hybridization. And when you have 90 and 90, kind of like this shape here, that'll correspond to the sp3 d2 hybridization. Um, so these hybridization uh, diagrams better explain the bond angles. Um, and you do, need, you do need to know how to make these hybrid um, orbitals by doing the electron promotion process and the hybridization process. And we're going to do some examples of that together in the next few videos. Um, and then we're going to show the bonding that happens when you do this hybridization. Uh, before we uh, finish off this video, one more term I want to explain is the term uh, sigma bond, sigma bond. So sigma Sigma bond. When you see direct overlap between um, uh, orbitals, direct overlap. So, for example, when I had, when I have an overlap between, let's say, a p of one atom and a p orbital of another, this direct overlap here, this is actually responsible for forming. Um, uh, a single bond generally, or a sigma bond, I should say, a sigma bond. So direct overlap between um, two orbitals. Uh, it could be, for example, a 1s from an H and then a, um, a P from a Cl. This direct overlap happening here is called a sigma bond. And so whenever you see a single bond, for example, that single bond is made up of a sigma bond, a direct overlap between um, uh, orbitals. It could be hybridized orbitals, it could be unhybridized orbitals, um, but most times you're talking about hybridized orbitals, but it could be really any orbital that you're dealing with. Um, so any orbital you're dealing with, um, if they do a direct overlap, that's going to create what's called a sigma bond. And when we see it, it's really just a single bond, or it's the first line that you see in any bond. So when you see that, that single line, that's going to be called a sigma bond and is created by the direct overlap between um, the, the atomic orbitals that we're studying. Whether they're hybrid orbitals or not, the direct overlap is always going to be sigma, which leads to the creation of a single bond. Double bonds and triple bonds have different types of overlap. They're not direct overlap. I'm not going to explain it fully in this video, but the way a double bond forms is essentially, so this is going to look weird at first, so don't worry too much if you don't understand it. This direct overlap part, is responsible for the, the single bond, or at least one of the lines in the double bond. Some orbitals will do this weird overlap where they sort of overlap in this parallel way. Like they're not really directly touching each other. There's there's just they're they're just above each other. Almost like if you have your hand you're holding your hands up and your fingers are trying to reach each other. So it's this parallel overlap, it's indirect overlap that leads to another line in your bond. So that's a different type of bond later on that we'll learn called a pi bond. And that would be responsible for another line in your bond. But for now, whenever you see um, a single bond, that's for sure going to be direct overlap from your orbitals. And so in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to draw um, bonding using the concept of hybridization. And we're going to show direct overlap to show the sigma bonds. We're going to focus primarily on um, uh, sigma bonds for now that involve single bonds. And then in the next lesson that you'll see, you'll see uh, overlap that leads to double bonds and triple bonds.